Hi, I'm Anna Smith and welcome to this special mini episode of Girls on Film with Marielle Heller, the director of A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood, starring Matthew Rhys and Tom Hanks. I sat down with Marielle in London to talk about the film, her work, her stars and awards season controversy. Enjoy. We're doing an issue on inspirational people. Who? Mr. Rogers. Hello, neighbor. The beloved children's television host. So good to see you again today. You hired me as an investigative journalist. I don't do puff pieces. 400 words. Play nice. So lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Welcome to Girls on Film. Happy to be here. Well, we are big fans of your work. Thank um, you. I loved your previous one, of course. Can you ever forgive me? Um, Thank you. Teenage Girl. Now, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, I loved. Mr. Rogers, though, a lot of people in the UK may not be familiar right. with him. Could you explain briefly who he is and why he's so culturally significant? He was a children's entertainer who truthfully wasn't taken that seriously when he started out. He started his show out in 1968, a very low-fi, low-production value show, you know, on sort of a balsa wood set that he made. And it was out of Pittsburgh on PBS stations, so our kind of public broadcasting station. And what was so revolutionary about his show was it was based in child psychology. He was trying to help kids deal with their feelings and feel loved just the way they were. And he ended up sort of shaping generations of children who grew up watching him who felt seen by him. And he didn't talk down to kids. He believed in telling kids the truth. There was a famous story where he was asked to come onto Sesame Street and do kind of a crossover episode with Sesame Street. And he said he would only go on a Sesame Street if they would take Big Bird's head off and show the kids that it was really a person in a costume. Really? Because oh. he believed in telling kids the truth. And we sort of have this idea of him as maybe kind and happy, but the truth is he also really dealt with very difficult subject matter like divorce. He did a whole week about divorce. He did episodes about death. He did an episode in 1968 about assassination. He did really complex, difficult stuff. And his final episode, he came back after 9-11 to speak to kids about 9-11. And of course, Tom Hanks just is the perfect person to play this role. It's very hard to imagine anyone else. There wasn't really anybody else who could have done it. <laughs> As I understand it, you kind of helped bring him on board. Is that right? Yeah, I did. I brought him to the project. You know, Tom is somebody who really, I think decides projects largely like I do based on who he may collaborate with and whether it's somebody he feels like he shares a vision with. And we had been looking for something to do together for a long, long time. And when I came on board, the producer said, you know, we've always wanted Tom Hanks, but he said no already. And I said, well, I could give it a go. I can try. And I sent it to him and he signed on right away. And it was like I performed a miracle. The power. So is he a fan of your previous work? Is that right? He was. He yeah. had watched The Diary of a Teenage Girl and we had a meeting afterwards and he had kept up with me over the years. I love that he's a fan of that film because you wouldn't think he was a target market, brilliant as the film is. I know, I know. <laughs> it's true. But I think he, I think he has diverse taste. You yeah. know, he watches lots of different types of movies and he's very... He's very interested in filmmakers and a, a very savvy person in terms of understanding the complexities of what goes into making a film and what makes a film good. Would you say that you have diverse tastes because there are some common threads between the movies you've made, but at the same time, they're all very distinct from one another? I definitely was aware after I made The Diary of a Teenage Girl that I didn't want to be pinpointed as somebody making movies just about teenagers, mm -hmm. I'll say. I went for a very grown-up story for my second movie, you know, about a middle-aged cat lady who is an alcoholic literary forger. Um, sort of the opposite. It had like no sex in it, where my first movie was all about sex. <laughs> um, if possible, this movie has even less sex in it. Um, but I think that was because I wasn't wanting to... I knew that for the course of my career, I wanted to be able to make lots of different kinds of movies. Yeah. And that meant I didn't want to kind of repeat myself too. And I think as artists, we're always trying to challenge ourselves to do something new. Mr. Rogers. I'm here to interview you. It is so nice to meet you. This piece will be for an issue about heroes. Do you consider yourself a hero? No, not at all. Oh, I like that. I insisted he read you before we agreed. And did he? Every article we could find. There's something about this one which feels incredibly relevant 
to now, sadly, yeah. um, particularly even, even in this country with our recent election results, you see people on Twitter kind of searching for some kind of humanity mm-hmm. and some truth and some way to connect with each other I and know. to remind each other what's important. I know. it's a. I think for me, it felt like a movie that I needed to make right now because I needed to be connected to our better, better instincts and to what it is to be a better human being. It's funny because the movie has been around for 10 years you know the the writers started working on it 10 years ago and we've all said it feels like it we made it when it was meant to be made you know this is the moment in time when we needed this movie it feels like it was all meant to be in that funny way it's the number one thing people say to me after they see it is this is exactly what I needed right now this is the type of movie we need right now and I think it's because it reminds us about compassion and it connects us to our own humanity and it connects us to each other and it's just rare that we get to do that these days. What were the movies that you grew up watching that you felt achieved that? Hmm. I remember loving Stand By Me. Even as a young girl, I felt like I was those kids. And um, it had that quality of being nostalgic but not precious. And it was so respectful of their experience as mattering. You know, even though it was about young boys, I just loved that movie. I mean, so many movies. I, You know, I grew up in the 80s. I, I loved movies like Princess Bride and Flight of the Navigator and all of these movies that kind of represented my childhood. But, yeah, I think the movies that really affected me were things like Stand By Me or Harold and Maude, where I felt weirdos or characters who wouldn't necessarily be given be thought of as like the lead of a movie were given humanity. I love Harold and Maud. That's a great example. What a film. Do you feel that the gender of the main character in a film is important or relevant to you? I think um, seeing a diverse range of characters on film is important for everybody. I think part of how we feel seen by the world is by being reflected in our media. So I think it's important that we are allowing multiple people in front of and behind the camera of all diverse backgrounds. For me, I feel like something that has been missing in media has been a wider range of what it means to be masculine. I think part of why some people were scared of Mr. Rogers or made fun of Mr. Rogers when he was around was because he represented a type of masculinity that scares people, that has more traditionally feminine qualities to it, a sensitive man. Um, And I think it's just as important that we... show that on film as well as women characters you know showing a more diverse version of what it means to be a man that's a really interesting point and one that some other filmmakers have made since coming on to our show recently that it's not just about strong women it's about vulnerable men mm-hmm. and it's about male mental health and of course your, your character played by Matthew Reese, and um, who's a journalist interviewing Mr yes. Rogers goes through his own journey with that and it, yeah and it's um it was something that I was really dedicated to was showing a man trying to be a better man. That's an example of manhood that I want my kids growing up to see. I want there to be more versions of that for people growing up to see, to see a a man caring for his baby, fixing a bottle, getting up in the middle of the night, crying, saying, I love you and I'm sorry. You know, these shouldn't be radical things to see on screen, but they are. Finally, the whole gender bias and award season question, I'm mm-hmm. sure you'll see of it, but um, do you think it still exists when it comes to the best director category? Do you think some voters are still thinking old white man when they picture a director? I think that is an unconscious bias that will probably be there for a long time, which is, yes, we have a version of a director that looks like an old white man in a baseball cap, and uh, it's hard to get past that. I also think there's something about movies that are more traditionally almost thought of as feminine, emotional movies, things that are quiet or character pieces that aren't as muscular, that people can't quite see the directing as clearly. And we have to kind of open our eyes to the multitude of ways that directing manifests and that a movie that is emotional was very carefully crafted, just like a movie that has huge action sequences was carefully crafted. You know, I'm married to a male director who does big action sequences. We both work really hard at our jobs, and one isn't better than the other. But I think it's easier to see the directing in those types of movies in some ways, whereas 
the directing in a movie like this, I think it can be sometimes overlooked because it, it's almost too nuanced. Well said. Well, best of luck in awards season. Best Thank luck with you. the film. Thank Congrats. you. Thanks for coming on Girls on Film. My pleasure. You okay? I'm profiling Mr. Rogers. On our program, I tried to look through the camera into the eyes of a single child. He's just about the nicest person I've ever met. I just don't know if he's for real. Lloyd, please. Don't ruin my childhood. Thank you for listening to Girls on Film. A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood is out Friday the 31st of Jan 2020 in the UK. Girls on Film is an HLA production produced by Hedda Archbold and Jane Long. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. <laughs>